Senator Begich is a big supporter of the poor, right? Do you think he's helping? Yes. As mayor, he was a total supporter. Uh, uh, I used to beg to get in to see him about every six or eight weeks just to tell him what we're doing and, and, and where we're going. And he's always been a supporter and always had a lot of good ideas. And, and, and he's uh, been helpful uh, back in the Senate. Uh, the problem, he has a, doesn't really have an office yet. They're moving, they're moving their offices to where they have some quarters there. Offices now are about the size of these three tables, and so they can't hire staff. And you know, there's just a lot of things to do. It'll take them a, a six months or so more to settle down to. To, but he is on top of everything. You know, he's he's busy. Uh, he's like his dad, Nick, uh, working all the time. So when he uh, gets settled in and and uh, gets a proper staff, he'll even be, even be more helpful than he is. In 2014 or 15 or 16, when all your colors are done, what are you missing? What's next? What do you need besides the, the, you know, the, the obviously large physical structures you're doing now to make this uh, the most effective port in the Pacific Northwest to be competitive with Vancouver and other places? Well, a railroad to the Arctic would be the would be a good road. <laughs> 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 well, uh, there will probably be one sometime, not in my lifetime, of course, but uh, uh, the gentleman over here was talking about coal. Uh, you know, the, the majority of the, re of the res coal reserves in America are in Alaska, and the best coal in the world, real expensive coal, the best coal in the world is right up here on this map of Alaska where we serve. The port serves all this except for southeast Alaska, we serve this whole western Alaska. And the best coal in the world is right up on top, from Point Lay, right about here to Barrow. And there's three trillion tons of coal sitting just under the surface of the ground in permafrost. And they tell me that you know, of the best coal in the world, it's coking coal, it's special <coughs> coal. It's not, it's not meant to be used for steam coal for you. And, and, uh, but it just happens to be in a tough place to get it out. It's right on the Chuck C. C. And, and I know a lot about that coal, and the state has some dollars in it, and AS, AR, ASRC really own, controls most of the land that it goes across to ASRC land, uh, NP, NPRA land, and some state land before it gets to Barrow. So three trillion tons of coal is enough coal to heat all of America, they say, for 300 years. I mean, 500 years. So we're not going to run out soon. So, uh, and, but then there's coal all over Alaska. And, and, uh, and there's probably three or four more Red Dog mines where Red Dog Mine is. And there's, there's all the resources, all the, the important resources of, of Alaska are in the Arctic. They're in the Northwest. So uh, a railroad to the Arctic would be good. Yes? Uh, I'm a lot of us are concerned about the traffic in, in town when they uh, develop more of the port down here. And also of the bridge going across. They're going to put the bridge on top of clay where they have, they put the dock <coughs> on the clay. And the dock that they put in over there on the other side is already sunk six inches by its own weight because it, that's why they can only use it for shaving. Now, if we put in a subway from the Anchorage Airport to Diamond Center, from Diamond Center to Kenai Marine Port, they already have an international-sized Marine Port in. From Kenai Marine Port to Kenai Airport, they've already extended their runway 300 feet to be equal to ours. And from Kenai Airport to the city of Soldatna, where the roundhouse would be, that would be 45 minutes with your pickup truck and your boat instead of seven hours combat driving with the tourists. That would be the first leg of the subway, and it'll take a total of five years. We've already had a meeting with Halliburton to find out what it would do. Halliburton does the subway game, and, it, and they said it'd only take five years to complete. And then that, that's the first leg. And the second leg is from the airport to the west end of the park strips for, for tourists to travel. And then the third leg is from the 
west end of the park strip down to the Marine Fort, and the fourth leg would be from the Marine Fort across to um, Kinnick, and it'd be all underground, a quarter of a mile underground, with very little maintenance, and uh, uh, 90 miles an hour. It'd be 45 minutes from Anchorage Airport or Anchorage, the city of Anchorage, to, to Soldotna. That's amazing, and no problem at all. You've taken us on quite a trip here. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here visualizing the map and how we're going to do this. Uh, you're, a, you're a visionary, and, uh, and uh, I don't know if I can help you get the money or not. But, uh, <laughs> Sarah but, Palin told me how to get the money. And she says that for, from Anchorage Airport to uh, Soldotna, there's going to be five stations. She says, divide the three, each station into three parts, passenger train, freight train, and uh, station, and get a grant between the state and the federal government for each, each uh, part of it. 